Hello everyone. So in this video, I'm going to be creating a stylized uh, metal panel material, obviously using Substance Designer. And for this one, what I'm going to do is use a tile sampler and use that to create some of the background panels that I'm going to be using. And I'm going to use a tile sampler as well just to spread those out. Um, but I think I'm going to, instead of using that, I'm going to use a splatter instead of the tile sampler, just because in this case I thought it was working a little bit better. So here I'm just testing with the tile sampler to see how that's going to work. And sometimes things don't go according to plan, so sometimes I test a little bit with some nodes. But if I see that that's not really working or giving me the results that I want, I just kind of test with other settings and other uh, nodes as well. And I'm going to use a gradient here just to add a little bit of a variation to the actual panel. So that it's not just a straight flat panel and it has a little bit of a change in the surface. So I'm going to use a tile generator in this case instead of using the original tile sampler that I was going to use. I just thought that that's, that was giving me a little bit, that was giving me better results. That looked more like what I was going for. So I just wanted, I was going for a more so panels that are kind of like overlapping with each other. That's kind of what I was going for here. And I just found that the tile generator uh, pretty much gave some results that matched with what I was going for. So that's the thing with Substance Designer. Sometimes you have to, sometimes you have to test with the different um, nodes just to see what you get. So I'm doing the same here with the directional warp instead of driving that through the original shape i just added the warp through the newly generated panels and i also want to add some metal panels on top of that so like i mentioned a lot of substance designer tends to be just kind of like practicing uh, and trying out a few different nodes just to see what you get so there's a lot of trial and error sometimes and once you make a few different materials, you start to get the hang of it. You start to learn which nodes do what exactly. Also, if anyone's interested, there's a, a there's an intro to Sub Designer tutorial that was made for 3DX. Uh, there's a link in the description if you're interested in that. Uh, that tutorial is pretty much going to take you through the creation of a whole material from start to finish. And it's really good because it shows pretty much how to actually use some of the nodes and there are some really good tricks in there as well and tips so in this case i just wanted to overlay a few different panels on top of the the ones at the bottom and i'm going to use the cells just to give it a bit more surface variation as well And I'm also going to use a slope blur on that, just that it also has more variation and it's not. So it doesn't look like you just used a cells node and called it a day, but you added a little bit more variation to it for noise as well. And I also used a slope blur on the whole thing just to add a little bit more uh, distortion and then I blended that with the original and just set the opacity really low so that there's just a tiny bit of that coming through as always I don't recommend going too uh, overboard with some of these details especially with noise type details just because they become a little bit too noisy and it also becomes too noticeable that you used a slow blur for that And then for the color, I'm just going to use the um, 
the blend here and then add a gradient map to it just to add colors to that and I'm going to use an ambient occlusion to mask some I'm going to make it so that there's a little bit of rust on this so I'm going to use the ambient occlusion so that those areas have that And that combined with the levels just so I can control the amount. I do want this to be a stylized material so I don't want to go too noisy with the texture. I want to keep it relatively clean and kind of smooth as well. So that's the thing with stylized uh, materials is that you don't want to go too you don't want to add too many details to the point where it starts to uh, look more uh, like a hybrid between realistic and stylized. So I decided to add some edge detail as well, so that those are most, more noticeable. And I also increased the saturation of the texture. Maybe a little bit too saturated, but, um, but in this case it's not too bad, I don't think. I also enabled metallic on it and for the roughness I just left it at a uniform color um, just because I was going with a, for a stylized look and so I just left it that way although I do recommend maybe spending some time with the roughness as well just so that there's more uh, surface variance uh, when it comes to the roughness and for metallic surfaces too and uh, when you're talking about stylized usually I just set it so that the uh, the metallic is not, not all the way up to 1, but instead is uh, set to, to a lower number, so it's not fully metallic. Obviously that's not really realistic, uh, but since we're going for a stylized look, I think that it's fine not to set the metallic all the way up. And sometimes I include an HSL between the uh, color map just to add more saturation. Um, but in this case, I think it, I may have gone a little overboard with the saturation. It does look a little bit too much. I think it's nice for a stylized material to be to have nice colors and saturated colors, but it's also uh, there's also a fine line between just going too overboard with it. I think in this case I may have gone a little bit overboard. Possibly even with the number of colors that I used. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a few scratches. So I'm going to use a tile sample just to scatter these around. And I'm just going to make sure that the opacity of these is not coming through too much, so that they're not too noticeable. And make sure to mask them so that there's, there's not that many of them. Uh, but that's pretty much it for this one. So again, if you want to learn how to make a material from scratch there's a tutorial in the video description but anyway here's the final render in the marble set tool bag so again if you like the video make sure you hit the like button if you're new to the channel uh, make sure you sub and i'll hopefully see you in the next video do you want to learn how to use substance designer to create interesting materials which you can use to apply to things like environments or props well in this intro to substance designer tutorial anthony carmona will walk you through the process on how to get started in making materials in substance designer click on the link below now to start learning how this is done anthony will start you off 
by explaining the theory behind physically based rendering, and from there he will show you the ropes to get started with the most useful nodes found within Substance Designer. This is a perfect tutorial for anyone who is new to Substance and would like to learn how to get started. This tutorial also includes a bonus lesson where Anthony will show you how to present a material through lighting and rendering using Marmoset Toolbag. Hey, so this is a very short video ad, so there's not enough time to cover everything. Click on the link in the description now to get started.